Hey everybody, it's Nicola Nintendo here, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. To quite a special video, um, this video is going to be entirely dedicated to the fishing side quest in this game, which I haven't really, we haven't really heard about it from actual, you know, gameplay terms. But you will as soon as you turn up on Banan Island, which I haven't been to yet. So this is the Wayfaring Island, Banan. And there is also a cave over here, but we're going to ignore that for now because, like I said, I'm just going to be doing the entirety of the fishing side quest, which is a pain. It's such a pain. I'll get into more details in a moment. Um, this is the old wayfarer, and he is actually the father of Romanos, who's back on Melida Island. So this is where he's ended up. He helped us, of course, to get to the Isle of Gust and all that jazz, so... He's talking about something crazy. You came to this distant island in search of the elusive beast, the mythical creature that sings the sailors from the waters of this island. The mermaid. What? <laughs> in my search for the mythical creature, the mermaid, I sacrificed many of life's pleasures. Friends, family, good snacks. <laughs> I gave it all up to search for the mermaid. Take this pool, for example. He bought her a paddling pool. Okay. <laughs> so, this is related to fishing, by the way. We will get there eventually. But, um, he is, of course, looking for the mermaid. And we need to help him move things along a little bit here. So, to find this mermaid, she's actually hanging around the island. What you have to do is kill all of the monsters on this little island and then she will appear out in the water so what we must do now is kill everything which will just take me a little second another thing that makes this video a bit odd for me is um i'm actually doing post commentary because to do this live would have actually been hell <laughs> um this particular run through of the fishing side quest took me about uh, probably about six hours. Um, I fell in the water. Herp derp. Sorry, I'll carry on my chat there in a moment. Here's the mermaid, so you have to hit her with the boomerang. And she'll be talking about stuff. I'm a human being, treat me like one. So she's actually just dressing up as a mermaid. She's not actually a mermaid. And she's in a, a, a rubber tube. <laughs> so she's swimming. Anyways, like I was saying, um, this does take a bit of time and normally what you would do in the playthrough would be you would activate the fishing side quest and as you complete the entire game you would do it gradually over a period of time. Now because I've decided to do it all in one video so that it's nice and convenient and neat, um, it, it's taken quite a while. Um, so yeah, like I said, about six hours this time. The last time it took me nine hours and I never even finished it, so it can take an absurd amount of time to actually complete. But anyways, we found the mermaid, yeah. Yes, we did, and she enjoys listening to Wayfarer's Tales. Oh, it's your dream come true, right? Uh, he doesn't believe us. Or could it be? She must have met another wayfarer to sing her mermaidish song to. Another wayfarer? What? Did you hear Link? Hey. hey. Another wayfarer? Teehee. You think he's talking about the lazy guy who drives our ship? Line Beck? Serious? She would go to him? Okay, whatever floats your boat. Hey kid, can I talk to you for a second? Okay, get this. A little while ago this girl came up and started talking to me. She had really tan skin and she was really spirited. Why? <laughs> Why does he have to do the evil face there? That is so creepy. She disappeared, huh? <laughs> the life of a dashing sea captain. All right, well, let's head back to the Wayfarer and see what the heck is going on. She's in his house, Oh. Finally met the mermaid. At last, my dreams have come true. You had a hand in this, young man, so I want to show you my appreciation. And he'll give us the fishing rod, which is one of the items that appears when you're sailing next to the cyclone slate, and something else that we haven't picked up yet. But you fish while you're sailing on the sea, basically. 
And he's talking about all this stuff. Keep an eye out for fish shadows. Go to where the fish are when you're above them, blah blah blah, tap fish. You'll see in just a second. So yeah, the mermaid's here. Oh, it's you. I found the wafer all thanks to you. I'm going to pretend to be a mermaid for a bit and let you think I'm the real thing. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Alright. So they're all happy, that's great and all, and we have ourselves a fishing rod, so we can go fishing, and that's wonderful. So let's talk to line back and sail out. Okay, so this is what a fish shadow looks like, and they'll be appearing all over the Great Sea, pretty much, so... You know, whenever you see one, just try and head towards it. You actually move a little bit faster than the fish, so they're quite easy to catch up to. And when you're able to fish, the little icon will be filled in with colour. So as soon as you reach the fish, it will fill in and you can fish for it. So it's pretty simple. And this is why I say you should do it over the course of a full playthrough and not concentrated into a tiny amount of, you know, concentrated fishing. It's just awful. But this is how you fish, and this, the text is sort of... It doesn't describe how you do it particularly well. But, um... You have to pull up on the rod and sort of hold down on the touchscreen to make sure it doesn't get away. And then when you make little circles, it reels it in. But it's better to do it sort of with practice rather than trying to read it. Um, so the little gauge at the side is going to go down when you start reeling in and go up when you are pulling back on the rod. So pretty much what I do is never let it get down below halfway because, I mean, for a fish like this who are sort of, you know, really easy and basic, they're not going to jump very often, which is what you just mentioned there. But when he does that, you want to let go of the touchscreen. And, you know, if you're down low and you have to let go, go of the the touch screen it's it's kind of tricky to get it back so you do not want to risk losing the fish so just do it gradually slowly bit by bit and you will reel in your first fish and this is the most common fish the skippy jack and it's the smallest too so there's actually five fish total to catch and you can see it on the collection screen there's five slots. Now what you want to do is search around the Great Sea for fish shadows and catch the first three fish on the list. Um, the second one is the Luvar and the third one is the Tuna. Uh, the Tuna is quite rare. I believe it took me about, um, maybe about seven fish shadows before I found all three of them, so be patient. Although this first stage is quite simple. If you want to try and uh, change when a fish appears, you can try docking on an island and then setting off again, or you can just swim about and one might appear. So this is me just cutting to when I got the second sized fish, so you can see what it looks like. Because when they jump out of the water, you'll be able to tell what they are. So if you're getting another fish that you've caught before, you can just run away by using the little arrow on the screen and you'll be able to run away. So you don't have to catch every fish you meet. So it makes it go by a little bit faster if you're not getting what you want. But this fish is the Luvar, I think. There's it jumping. It's sort of orange. It's a lot bigger than the, the Skippy Jack. So you'll be able to tell right away. It's pretty cool. Like all the fish, they look really different. So you won't have any trouble like, oh, is that a new one or not? But um, it's me catching the second one. Oh my goodness. This has been stressing me out so much, this video, because I've been wanting to do it for a long time. And the first time I sort of tried practicing it to sort of test out my theories, although it is completely random, is what I've concluded from this. Fish shadows are random, the chances of fish appearing on them are random too. So if you're not finding it, you will eventually, it's just taking you a while. Oh sorry, that's the tuna. Never mind. I got the name wrong, foolish me. And this is me sailing for the third and final fish, which is the most rare one, 
and it's bright pink, so you'll definitely be able to tell which one it is. And these fish actually do take a little bit of time to take to reel in, but that might just be me being safe, I suppose. But I would rather take more time and not lose the fish than lose the fish, obviously. So patience is key, you know. But like I say, if you are trying to like do this in one sitting, be prepared for a good few hours of searching because it is ridiculous, but you know, do it over the course of the game, it'll be a lot easier because you don't have to worry about it. You know, if you see a shadow, go for it. It's, it's a lot more relaxed that way. But of course, I want to make a nice, neat, you know, guide, I suppose, for you. So we want to make this work. And you've seen the fish jump a couple of times, there it is again. It's really quite a cute fish. <laughs> so we're getting there. It's me being quite safe. See what I mean? Like when it jumps when it's low, you sort of have to panic and pull back as soon as you can. But it can be pretty intense, this whole fishing thing. Oh. I probably could have just reeled in for the last one there, but... Alright, that's the Luvar. Sorry, I got them mixed up. And he's so big, we have to use this hook that we don't actually have on our ship yet. <laughs> but anyways, when you've caught those three, head back to Bannon Island. I'll just show you. There they are, the, t the three on the top right. I ran into... I think it was about seven or eight fish it took me to find all three of them. So he'll be like, oh hey, it's a Luvar, you've done really well. And he will give you an item which will improve the chances of getting rare fish. The big catch lure. So this means there's actually a new fish that's available to us in regular fish shadows like the other ones um, called the Rusty Swordfish. And it's pretty rare. I think it took me maybe... Oh, I don't know. I think I was quite lucky. It only took me like three or four attempts to get this one. So here we are again, me cutting to chasing after the fish that will contain... The fish shadow that will, will contain the rusty swordfish. Oh, this is, this is quite repetitive and boring, but you know, you're seeing 20 minutes of it. I had to go through six hours of it. Well, more like 15 if you count my first attempt at it. But it's been an intense last couple of days trying to record just to find the footage for it because it's like, whoa. Oh, it's very tense. So this is what the rusty swordfish will look like and you can probably tell right away that it weaves around a lot more and when you try to reel it in, it won't, it'll go down really fast, the gauge. So it should jump out of the water in a minute so you can see. There it is. So, you know, definitely, holy crap, that's a new fish. <laughs> it's this sort of red swordfish looking thing. And with the big catch lure, also the radar fish like the tuna and luvar will become a lot more common in the shadows and the scapey jet will actually become a lot more radar. And of course you can catch these guys, the rusty swordfish. So when we've caught this guy, we'll actually want to head back to Bannon Island again to the old Wayfarer and he will tell us about the final fish that we have to catch, which is the nightmare one. The complete and utter nightmare. <laughs> My god. Man, he's getting close now. And there he is, the rusty swordfish. Link is so happy, man, look at him jump. Yeah, I just took some time to look at the impressive pattern on its back. Yeah, it's pretty nice, pretty nice. So here we are again. Hey dude, I caught another fish. It's a rusty swordfish, yay, impressive. Uh-huh. And he'll actually give you a shit part, which is kind of nice, but that's not what we're here for. We are here for the following. 
Lately, fish shadows have been sighted on the sea's surface. Rumours are swirling among the bold and hearty fishermen. The legendary fish Neptuna surfaces once again. If you were to catch one, it would truly be... You would truly be the legendary romantic. <laughs> this guy is nuts, man. So, the, the rusty swordfish is there, and the last slot belongs to Neptuna. Now, this one is a nightmare. <laughs> Basically, what you want to do is, at the moment I have two regions of the sea unlocked and it actually takes me a little while to notice the uh, icon on the left, the west side of the screen. But that's what the, the swordfish icon looks like. You cannot find the Neptuna in regular fish shadows, you can only find it in the swordfish shadows. The problem with this is, in the swordfish shadows, you can also find rusty swordfish and it took me god how many tries uh probably over 20 swordfish shadows before i found the neptuna and this one isn't actually a neptuna i just did it for demonstration purposes uh this is actually a rusty swordfish but my god it took me such a long time um but like i was saying what you want to do is Scroll between the sections of the sea that you have. I don't actually know if changing the sea makes any difference, but you want to sort of go towards um, the edge of one of the seas and wait there for about a minute or two. If it doesn't appear, switch to another spot of ocean, wait there for a minute or two, and then switch back and forth between the two or three oceans or however many you've unlocked so far. And this is actually me snagging that tuna now after the millionth time. And you'll be able to see it jump out of the water and it's blue and you will not mistake it. And if you see that, be careful. It will jump a lot and the gauge just shoots right down. You'll only probably be able to get like one or two yards closer every time if you're trying to be careful about it. So finding this guy, it's just complete luck. I mean, the swordfish shadows appear very rarely. So that's already a problem, but when you actually get into the swordfish shadow, the chances of finding a Neptuna are just ridiculous as well. So, you know, those two combinations of things, it's just the worst. So, I found that sailing around the sea doesn't make any difference for when the swordfish shadows appear. You can just sort of sit still on the edge of an ocean and then switch to the next one. I mean, that's what I did, and I probably found a swordfish shadow every, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or something. 10 to 20 minutes and then once you once you get in there you just have to hope that it's the Neptuna and not the rusty swordfish because my god you'll get so pissed off <laughs> it's like when you see that red fish you know the tension before it jumps out of the water and then it's not what you want it's the worst feeling but here I am and I take ages to catch the thing because I was just so nervous my heart was beating so fast and I was like you know, it's just getting closer and closer to the screen and I don't want to lose it because it's taking me so many hours to find it. You know, I mean, you can find it and then it goes and you're just left there, like, wanting to cry. That's what happened the first time, like, my nine hour try. I eventually found it and then it got away off the line. And I was so pissed off, like, I actually felt like crying, just the frustration. So I was trying to get like footage of it. Oh, it's so close to the screen. Look how big it is. There's only three yards left. The tension. Oh, at this point, I was so scared. And then like this point here, the gauge wasn't seeming to be going up. And I was like, shit, why is it not going up? But here we are, two yards. Oh, it didn't even go up then. One, zero. And there it is, the legendary fish, Neptuna, and I just sat on this screen for a while and breathed a sigh of relief because it was over and done with. And yeah, <laughs> six hours or 15, however you want to look at it, condensed into 20 minutes. Good luck, fellow fishermen and women. You will need it. My god, you will need it. So the whole point of catching this fish, of course, is to take it back to this guy. See what he says. This is the legendary fish, Neptuna. This is the first time I've gazed into its mighty eyes. 
for you to have caught the living embodiment of the romance of the sea. Young man, you have the most adventurous heart. For truly seizing the spirit of wayfaring adventure, a gift. And he will give us a heart container, so it's a pretty worthwhile reward, but my god, it takes so much to get it. All those hearts, man. So much progress in the last three videos. Holy crap. And we are now truly the legendary romantic. But that's it. I'll just show it in the collection screen to end off the video. So next time we'll probably head back to Mersey and do some temple stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.